Hi guys. So I was playing around on our server and I was making these sort of cool flux infused tools and I realized I was using something that when I first sort of found out about it I found it very hard to sort of find out information on how exactly you acquire this item. Now this item is a minium stone. Now if anyone has played the sort of tech it classic or the original tech it they'll probably remember that what you could do is you could make certain types of matter with equivalent exchange um, or sort of other, other systems where you could turn that matter into other things so you could sort of like get rid of your junk and turn it into other things now in the new version of TechIt they've, they've not really got an exact replacement for that but I have noticed that a lot of my friends and my girlfriend that I play on the server with for example they've all sort of gone oh, we can't do this anymore it's kind of you know annoying we've got all these resources we can't use now uh, this minium stone kind of replaces that it's as you can see from the description of it it is a work in progress but what I'm going to do is quickly show you the things that this can do now this minium stone for starters can be used to make diamonds so that's obviously part of this video description and the way you can go about that is with two blocks of obsidian um, so if you t if you take obsidian like this, uh, let's take this and rearrange it like that. That is a formula to make iron. And if we then do this, we will get 32 iron. We can do this with the iron, as you can see, we make four gold, and this four gold can turn into a diamond. Very useful stuff there. Now clay can be used in exactly the same way. So that's quite important to remember. These are the two sort of things you want to be using if you're going to be making diamonds. Now there is something even more important about making things with this minium stone. And diamonds, you know, in tech it, you can get hold of them actually quite easily. If you put down a quarry in the right place, you're going to get lots of diamonds. It is nice to be able to make them as you need and to be able to make iron and gold um, if you need them. But the biggest thing that I have found to use for this minium stone is to put iron in the same formula we did for the clay we get ender pearls and these are ridiculously useful these allow you to make yourself tesseracts they allow you to make really cool armor later on uh, power armor so if you want to make any of the really good stuff with the power suits you're going to need ender pearls and you're also going to need shiny ingots um, making them is a whole different story but anyway so this minium stone is incredibly useful and the way that you make it is that you need to cook things in this calcinator now a calcinator if we go and just type this in here let me have a look a calcinator is made very simply you need cooked stone and you need three iron ingots and we also need a an alloodal base and a glass bell now the glass bell if we just type in here we go equipment exchange an alloodal base is also just iron and stone you need seven iron and two stone and the glass bell is quite literally just glass that's it just need you seven glass each of these will need to be powered with some sort of um, combustible item coal for example and then what you need to do is you need to cook things in this calcinator that have got an EMC value of diamond or higher. So as you can see there, that's 8192. And what I've got over here is I've got a silver block, which is 9216. That's fairly easy to get hold of. You can also use diamonds. Um, if you if you use an efficient method, you can easily make more diamonds than you used to make the minium stone, like by a long degree. The other option is to use emerald, which has the same same EMC value as diamond, and you also have a block of gold. Now, a block of gold is a complete overkill. I would not use a block of gold unless you have way too much of it, and you know you're going to make yourself more. But as you can see, the EMC value is that you know double what you need to be using and the reason for this is you only use four gold is the same as same emc as a diamond if we take four out of there as you can see it's got the same emc as a diamond so what you would do is you would cook eight 
items with that EMC. It has to be a single item. So let me just get the rest of these things here. And I'll grab, uh, let's see, we've got one, two, three, four. We've already got one in there, it's five. So I'll take another three diamonds out. There we go. Now we're also going to need some cooked stone, which I believe I threw up here. We've got a gold in there, and we're going to need some iron ingots. So what we're going to do is, as we cook these things here, we're also going to need an inert stone. And you make an inert stone like this. So you need four cooked stone and a gold ingot. And now we get our inert stone. And what we're going to have to use is the stuff we get out of here, which is minium dust. So once we've got eight of this minium dust, we're going to put this inert stone on top of the aludal, and we're going to put our eight minium dust underneath here. So I'm going to quickly cook these items up. Okay, so here we are. We're just cooking up our last bit of minium dust, and we're just going to literally, we've got this here. It's a very simple process. Once you've got the resources for it, and you know what you're doing, you then get yourself this minium stone really easily. So here we go. You're going to get a fresh minium stone. Awesome. All right, now, the recipes for this can be quite easily seen. If you do uses, which is press U automatically, uh, sorry, the standard configuration is press U. I don't know if you change your key bindings. So as you can see, you can do a lot of things with a minium stone. And some of these really are, yeah, meh. I mean, to be honest, if we go and have a look, I mean, this is just from using a quarry. As you can see, we've got like 8,000, 32,000, 1,100. Okay, not much sand. We haven't done much in sandy areas. So the sort of the really basic uses for it, to be honest, unless you've got them loads of them hanging around, there's really no point in using them. But as we go through here, um, now you might possibly want to use this one, flint to make clay. To be honest, you have to be thinking about there is a limited amount of uses on your minium stone. So if I take out another two stacks of this, and we'll just use this as an example. So I put this here. And we do this, and we do this. Now, minium stone has got a limited amount of uses. It will consume a use for every item you make. So, as you can see here, we would be making we'd make 32 uses to make this iron, and then we would make four uses, so that'd be 36 uses, to make the gold, and then we would do one use from our four gold to make a diamond. So, in total, that would be 37 uses. But if we then wanted to make obsidian for example and if we go into our minium stone wow it's just there we go we'll just do it this way there, is it. there we go now if we wanted to make obsidian well we need two stacks of obsidian to make one diamond which means we would have to do 64 for one stack of obsidian another 64 so that'd be 128 we add that on to what we got from uh, already we know to make a diamond which is 37 well that then becomes more than 150 for us to well more than 160 even for us to be able to make a single diamond so our uses have just gone up like literally fourfold so there's really really you have to make sure you're, you're using an efficient method if you're going to be using this to make more minium stones and if you're just a throwaway thing fair enough you've got all these recipes that you can use and as I mentioned earlier, you can use clay. So the title of this video is also Making Diamonds. Now if we have a look here, you'll notice that I have got a load of igneous extruders and magma crucibles. Now you could use a lava fabricator for what I've used the magma crucibles for here. But essentially, what I'm doing is I am making cobblestone in this igneous extruder. And I've also got another one over here, which is making cobblestone. This is set up in a very limited space, as I'm sure you can see. I would actually only need one, but yeah, um, I would set this up. So, you only need one bucket of lava and water. If we have a look in this one, I've only got one bucket. I accidentally put two in there. And this can constantly make cobblestone, just like a cobblestone generator. So, you, you won't use up the water or the lava. You don't need to provide it with a source of either. Both of these are just feeding cobblestone into these magma crucibles. And these magma crucibles are just feeding that lava straight down into this igneous extruder here. And this igneous extruder does have a source of water 
and it is just making uh, obsidian every time and just pumping it out into that chest. Now this chest is linked up to our ME system. It's just I didn't want to use an entire storage card, and I didn't potentially want the system getting uh, sort of clogged up. If we break this uh, bit of front we've got here, oh wow, that was smooth. Right, so put this down here. So all we do is just set up a storage bus like that, which just means that any obsidian we get in here below the maximum for this chest just tries to go into here. Um, anything in that chest is considered part of the system. So we've got this one here, which comes from these two magma crucibles. So it, it, it makes stuff fairly regularly. Um, we should see lava coming in there. And so you can see it's yeah fairly regular source of lava there. And we've also got this one here. So this Ignis extruder is passing cobblestone up to this magma crucible. Magma crucible across to this Ignis extruder, which is making obsidian. So that is a very simple setup. You could use a lava fabricator to do this. Um, the only reason I've not used a lava fabricator is these uh, magma crucibles. If we go and have a look at the recipe here, uh, magma crucible. These just require nether brick, which you know, once you've got diamond and got yourself some obsidian. I mean, to be honest, you know, if you had lava, I think you can make these igneous extruders. Look. Yes, you can make these igneous extruders without anything that requires diamond. So literally, you could find yourself a source of lava, just pump the lava into this igneous extruder with some water, and make yourself the obsidian to make a nether portal and go and get yourself the stuff for nether bricks. Now, but if we have a look at lava fabricator, let's have a look here. Lava fabricator. As you can see, we need blaze rods. Now, you can make these magma creams actually without blaze rods because you can use your fluid transposer and just put destabilized redstone onto glowstone but that just you know the yeah the blaze rod not fun to do um okay let me see you know what have i been in egypt there Let's just double check we can't no we can't make them okay so that would be one method to go by this now you can get clay as well Potentially getting hold of clay could be easier to set up, but in other ways it's more finicky. Now one of these um, options you have here is if you use a induction smelter and you place sand in there, so let's have a look at, uh, no, we've got these here. We go. Right, so if we have a look at the induction smelter, here we go. So the induction smelter with sand and uh, let's find the dust. There we go. Sand and the iron dust or the pulverized iron. You get this slag, and you can use this slag to make clay. So that's one potential way to go about this. Is what you could do is you could have a system where it's set up that it just constantly pulverizes and then cooks. Just you know, a set of iron, uh, sorry, a set of ores that you don't really need, and you would get yourself, you know, sort of the slag to make clay. Now, one of the other ways to make this is, I set up a tree farm in one of my previous videos. Now, tree farms create sludge, and what you could do is you could have a tree farm that's creating energy, which is great because that will give you um, all the energy you need to do sort of a lot of things, and you get the sludge out of it. The sludge could then be um, put into a sludge boiler, which would create a random block. Um, now that block can be sand, it can be dirt, um, it can be clay, mycelium, I think it can be nether rack as well. So potentially you could get the resources for your magma crucible uh, by taking the nether rack and cooking it into nether bricks. So what I'm going to quickly do is I'm going to go into a creative mode and uh, I'll go on to a single player map and I'll just quickly set this up just so you could see the ways that these work um, a little bit more coherently. Okay, this is a sort of basic demonstration of the magma crucibles and igneous extruders that I showed earlier. So as you can see, we've just got one igneous extruder up here, and this is just sending out everything it makes to 
these magma crucibles and it is producing more than they need. We could probably maybe even have a fourth one up here. Now if we have a look back here you'll notice that one of the cool things about this is it doesn't need any power at all. So that this creative cell is only applying power to these magma crucibles not to these two igneous extruders. Now I have used a creative cell and creative portable tank you would obviously have to give your own power source somehow. So each of these just keep producing lava. These are just pumped straight down into these this one igneous extruder here and it will be producing more obsidian than even those three can produce. Now there is a weird thing here. I suspect this is something to do with these pipes that I've used. That it, that's the reason that we're getting more there. I don't know. You might maybe want to use Buildcraft instead. I don't know. But as you can see, that is a really basic setup. You know, you would really, if you did want to just constantly produce um, yourself some lava, and even if you had a source of uh, cobblestone, you could maybe just pump that into here. But this sort of renewable way literally just needs one igneous extruder there, giving cobblestone into this magma crucible, and this magma crucible passes that lava into the other igneous extruder with a source of water, and we have obsidian. Okay, so now to look at the tree farm side of things. Okay guys, here you can see that I've set up a, a really sort of dumb of creative tree farm here. And it's really just to illustrate the point of the sludge boiler. So if we look here, we've got this sludge that it's got from harvesting these trees. Now I'll write this down. And I'm using stone fluid pipes here, just so we can see everything that's going on. So that sludge is sort of being pumped out of there, and it will go into this sludge boiler. Ooh, apple nom noms. Sorry, I like my nom noms. So let's wait for this to go in here. We've already cooked a couple of things. So as you can see, we've got soul sand and dirt. Here comes the sludge. Sounds like a song. So it's creating items. As the sludge that gets pumped into there, it's just creating more and more items. And it is a random process, um, but as you can see over here, just to demonstrate this, I've got a nullifier. And anything that comes out of here, literally anything that comes out of here goes into there at the moment. So potentially, if you didn't want some of these items, you could do that. So I'm hoping we're going to get some uh, clay coming out of there. Let's uh, make some more of these grow quickly. Here we go. Hopefully we'll get a bit more sludge. Well, I've never really said that in my life. Hopefully we'll get some more sludge. Now one of the things you will notice here is that as I'm standing around this, I am actually being made ill. I'll just quickly go to the walk around here as it starts to cook things up. You'll see that I get uh, poisoned, I believe. It comes. Uh, I'm ill, I'm ill. Hunger and poison. Let's go back to creative. There we go, we've got clay coming out of there. So it is a random process, and you know, sometimes you'll get loads of clay, sometimes you won't. But essentially, if you were using this for your power source, you could easily power this sludge boiler and you would get free clay out of there. So you could use that for your minium stones. And from that, you could also get out your dirt that you might need if you didn't have a large supply of it to enable you to use a sort of cycling through with the induction smelter. Now, I'm not going to put the induction smelter sort of explanation on here. It's something you might want to do yourself. The reason for that is for the effort that goes into it, it's not something I would say go and do this to make yourself diamonds. If you're going to make diamonds, I would say either that method over there or this method over here. Now, this does require a lot of energy. This requires a lot less energy, but it's a random process. So, you, so you've either got, okay, put energy in, know what you're going to get, get energy out, might get the diamonds as a byproduct. And there's nothing to say you couldn't combine the two. The final thing I wanted to say is when you are creating the diamonds, you can do it by an automatic process. So if I make a cyclic assembler here and place this down, and we'll get ourselves a schematic. Like so, and we'll get ourselves some obsidian. 
There we go. Right. Now, if we place, oh, I don't know, medium stone, numb nuts. What a muppet! There we go. So what you can do is uh, you can set up these cyclic assemblers to have items coming in, and you could, for example, have a single minium stone in there and some city, and you put in a schematic, and you'd say, okay, I want this to make this. Let's go to that. So that's okay. And then if we look here, if you hold shift, you see this, you actually see what you're making. So you could set up a line of those. Unfortunately, you can't use the auto crafting tables uh, from my factory reloaded, I think it is, or build craft. You can't use them for some reason. The minium stone doesn't register as an item or a recipe you can use in there. So these also do require energy, uh, but they will create very quickly. So you could also have this automated, completely automated, making yourselves minium stones and making yourselves um, or making the resources for minium stones and automatically getting diamonds and iron out in the and gold in the items in, in the in the proportions that you want them in. So I hope this has been useful. I hope if you didn't know about minium stones, you now know how to, and you'll be able to make awesome stuff and make yourself tesseracts and flying power suits and all that cool stuff. Hope you've had fun. Do awesome things in Tekkit.